A couple of weeks ago, I posted a lesson on using moving backgrounds in your videos, and there were so many helpful responses, I decided to make a part two, and this time as a crowdsourced video, our first one ever. Now, it is important to watch the first video. You need to understand the basic ideas and procedures and why we do them. The thing is, though, if you are willing to do a little more pre-planning before you shoot, you will be rewarded with a background plate that is virtually indistinguishable from the real thing. And here's how. So if you want to have a perfect moving background recipe that you can use again and again in your green screen videos, in addition to what we covered last time, Let's add some new ingredients that will make this recipe really, really tasty. First of all, selection of your background. In addition to all the things I talked about last time, note if it's windy out. It's usually not a good idea to record on a windy day because then you'll have to add a fan in the studio. And besides adding a little noise, for the kinds of stand-up shots you'll be doing, it's a bit of overkill. And if it's, if it's windy out, there may be a lot of fair-weather cumulus clouds moving around. This will cause your lighting to change constantly, and you're not going to do that in the studio, I hope. Then your video becomes about making a video, and not about what makes you a trusted advisor. The fact that it might be noisy doesn't matter. We can make it sound however we like. So, with that, with that little extra caveat in mind, choose your background. Okay, now that your background is chosen and you've set up your camera at eye level, step in front of the camera and record about 30 seconds of yourself for reference back when you're in editing. You want to take a look at where the sun is coming from so that you know where the shadows are falling and so you can reproduce that. Make note of what your audio sounds like by using the same mic that you'll be using in the studio later. Make note of also the white balance, the focal length, um, the iris, you know, the, the, the f-stop, uh, the focus. You want to try to be around the same distance from the camera in the studio as you are, you know, in the shot that you're shooting outside. So once you set all that up, then walk out of the shot and keep recording for about five minutes. Why five minutes? because that's about the, the amount of time you're not going to want to be in front of the camera for five minutes without ever cutting away to something else, even if it's just a close-in shot. So five minutes is more than enough to get whatever you need. So um, we'll get our five minutes worth of footage now, and I'll see you back in the studio. If you're using a phone camera, Understand that f-stop is set from the factory, but you can always change the focal length in your editing program by using one of the blur filters. And if you want to be super precise about how much blur it should be, you can use the website dofsimulator.net and plug in the values for the lens and the camera combination you want it to look like you shot with. Now, obviously, you're not going to make an iPhone video with the exact same quality as an Aeroflex uh, cinema camera, but when you blur it out, you can get close enough to make it work. Because getting good composition with good light will make an iPhone video look even better than the Airy shot with less care and maybe handheld. Okay, we've got our footage. Look at the shot you got of yourself in the background. Then set your lights so that the shadows fall on you at the same angle and direction. Set the white balance to the same setting as what you used outside. If it makes you look weird, then reset the white balance to normal, and later you'll change the white balance of the background plate to match you. And then record against green screen as usual. Bring your footage into the editor, cut out the green screen, Insert the background plate. And let's see what we've got. The first thing we should look at is the overall brightness of the shot. With green screen, you want about a 50% gray scale in your background, especially around the places where it might show sizzling. So I usually start 
by bringing down the brightest parts of the shot. Now let's harmonize the white balance between you and the background. Try to get them as close as you can to each other. You can also look at color balancing the subject according to season. Think bluer in the winter and more toward red in the summer. You can also match the saturation. Try using less saturation in the winter and more in the summer. If you need to add some blur to the background, check your depth of field chart for the lens and camera combination you're actually using in your studio space, and add that amount of blur to the more distant parts of the background plate. The Focus Blur in Final Cut Pro does a great job at this. It allows you to add a blur to certain parts of the shot while leaving other parts alone. This allows you to keep the parts of the background scene that are closest to you nice and sharp while making the more distant parts look, no, more distant. Now compare what you sounded like in the background plate to what you sound like in the studio. Okay, now that your background is chosen and you've set up your camera at eye level, step in front of the camera and record about 30 seconds of yourself for reference back when you're in editing. To make the outdoor shot sound more real, try reducing the bass in your studio shot and you'll find the two shots match better. Finally, add back some of the background noises from the original background plate but at a lower level. If there isn't enough, you can go out to a, a sound effect site like Audioblocks and pull down whatever you need. And there you have it, a green screen moving background shot that looks nothing like it was shot on green screen. And thanks to our sharp-eyed subscribers who pointed out all the stuff I showed you today. Technical stuff is often what we need to attend to first to make sure that the real you gets through. Get that right, and finding the real you under all the conditioning we go through on a daily basis is worth all the time and trouble it takes to set yourself free. Such is the destiny of a visible authority. Mm -hmm.